DC Rebirth, or as DC basically likes to call it, is a fresh restart for the entire company. It's basically a line-wide jumping on point where the company admitted they lost their focus along the way back when New 52 happened, and they got rid of Legacy, and they got rid of a lot of characters' backstories, and things got a bit muddy. Now, this is one of the first volumes that have come out of the DC Rebirth line, and of course, today I'm going to be talking about Detective Comics Volume 1. Let's get into it. Right off the bat, I'm going to say that I think this is the best Bat book on the stands right now. Yes, I think it's better than Tom King's Batman. Yes, I think it's better than Scott Snyder's All-Star Batman. I think, without a shadow of a doubt, this is the book that I've had the most fun, and it really doesn't even center on Batman. The plot here mainly centers around Batman having to form his own little military group. Now, you're probably wondering Batman wouldn't do such a thing. It's not really within his character, yada, yada, yada. Well, in this instance, it kind of is. There's a reason for it, simply because there is an organization that is forming underneath Batman's nose. It's militarized, and they are basically copycats of Batman. They are mimicking his style, only with much deadlier force. This forces Batman to go to Batwoman and go, look, I really want you to put together a team. You've got military experience, you know how to run a group, and I need them very well trained. Can you do it? Batwoman then goes and conscribes, spoiler, the orphan, Clayface out of all the characters, and Red Robin. Red Robin fans, you can breathe a sigh of relief because your boy, finally, after five years of basically getting shit on in the New 52, has a solid book. You're also probably wondering, well, Clayface, that's a really weird character. He's a villain. How does that work into this book? James Tinian, the author of this, sets that up really well. Because the first interaction that you have with Clayface in this book is the Clayface is sitting inside of this movie theater watching one of his old movies, and people are running away from him. They're freaked out, and Clayface pleads to Batman, look, I just want to do some good in this world. I want to be what I used to be. I want to be pretty. I want to be this handsome person that people can look up to. And Batman says, look, I can't really promise I promise you that, but I can give you a bit of a second chance if you work for me. This was a fun read all the way through, and while yes, the plot in here is pretty standard stuff, you've got a military organization forming under Batman's nose, da 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 we've heard it a million times, Batman forms a group, he has to stop the group, Grant Morrison did this, a whole bunch of other writers did this, but James Tinian really focuses in on the side characters. The Orphan and, let's face it, the Spoiler are two characters that chances are, unless you are heavily invested in DC Comics, you don't even know who the hell they are. And by the end of this, you do get a sense of who these characters are and you do end up feeling for them because they start realizing, yeah, we're in over our heads really, really badly. James Tunney and the protege of Scott Snyder, and it really does show here, has a deft hand and a deft voice in every single one of these characters. That's something that I really like. There's a whole bunch of characters in this book and each one is unique. Each one has different motivations. Each one sounds different. That can be very tricky for certain writers to pull off. I'm looking at you, Brian Michael Bendis, where every single character kind of sounds the same if you have them in a group and there's really no distinction between them. Out of all the characters in this volume that get the most play, it's Batwoman. This really is Batwoman's show and she steals a lot of the amount of scenes in here, especially in relation to how the overall story plays into her personal life without giving away too much. But I will say that there was a huge twist in the middle of this that I'm pretty good at detecting this type of stuff, but I really didn't even see coming and I went, oh my gosh, how could I not see it? It was right in front of my face. Art duties in here are handled by Eddie Barros, Alvaro Martinez, and Al Baranuvio, with Eddie Barros being the strongest of the bunch. There definitely is a house style going on here where each issue kind of looks similar, but it's distinct enough that you can tell it's a different artist, but it's not too far gone where you go, why does Batwoman look this way in this issue, but she looks like this in another issue that it doesn't make any sense, I can't tell who these characters are. There's none of that. that there's really none of that, which is a huge problem when a book is double shipping every single month. Sometimes 
artists aren't able to simulate another artist's style and you end up losing who it is. Does not happen here, so that's good news. Furthermore, while Eddie Barros really is the strongest artist of the bunch, there are a few moments where he likes to layer panels on top of panels and it got a bit muddied for my taste and I couldn't really tell which panel I was supposed to read next and I lost pace of the story and it just went downhill for there for me. It's not terrible, but there were a few pages where I went, ah, oh, God, that layout could have been done a bit differently. Special features in the back of this thing include your standard variant covers, your sketches, your diagrams, yada, yada, yada. It's all standard stuff, really nothing that's going to blow you away. But I will say that for 17 bucks, you're getting a good amount of comics in here, and it's going for about 10 bucks on in-stock trades. You really are getting one of the best Batman stories on the stands right now that doesn't even really involve Batman. But... I highly, highly recommend you check this one out. I rate my books on a pass, borrow, buy, perfect scale, and I'm gonna give this one a solid buy, guys. Check this one out. You won't regret it. It's a lot of fun, and like I said, best Batman book on the stands right now. There you have it, guys. That's my review for Detective Comics Volume 1 from the DC Rebirth line. Overall, I really dug this. It was a fun ride all the way through, and I've never been that crazy of a fan of James Tinian's writing. It's just never been something that struck with me, but this was something that I really, really dug, and I really recommend you check this out if you're kind of tired of what Tom King's doing, or if you're not crazy about Scott Snyder's All-Star Batman. This is a fun ride all the way through. There's a sense of emergency here. There's a sense of growth from a bunch of these characters, and I can't wait to see where it goes next. Seriously, read this volume and then you'll end up on a big cliffhanger that makes me want to go, oh my gosh, what's the next volume coming out? I want it now. It's a really, really great read. If this is your first time checking out my channel, I do weekly reviews of hardcovers, trade paperbacks, absolute editions, omnibuses, all that good stuff. You can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. It's going to be found in the description below. And if you like this content and you want to support this channel, Patreon is found in the description below. You know what to do. Thanks, guys. Let me know what you thought of this volume in the comments section below. I love you. I'll see you soon. Bye.